My whole life I have struggled with death, my entire life. I want to not have to worry anymore and not have anything tie us down and not have to say, no, we can't afford it anymore. Like we can't go on this trip because we can't afford it or we can't get the time off or any of those things. I just want to be able to do what we want when we want it. Is my mother in on August 23rd of this year um, committed suicide? I don't think leadership is a strength of yours. Wow, I didn't. I didn't even know I could do that. But I... We know the answers, but we rationalize our way out of it sometimes. What are you looking to get out of this session? So I'm looking for as much personal growth as possible. Um, I want to um, be financially debt free, just like everyone else in the world. I want to be able to, um, I'm not a big fan of my nine to five job. Um, it's, I work in corporate America and it, I left what I love because it wasn't paying the bills so that I could pay the bill. And now I hate what I do. So um, I would love to be able to financially just be able to retire myself and not have to worry about um, having to go back to that and be able to travel more. Um, both my parents are from the Midwest. So I have all extended family from there. I have family in Alaska, California, England, and I would love to be able to go see my family whenever I wanted to or just travel whenever I want to, um, have a house and all that sort of stuff and not have to worry about bills ever again. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same point, um, I've always been told that I'm a um, fixer, so I love to help other people too. So with the gel, that is something that I love. Um, I'm a, I have been a licensed esthetician for 10 years. So being in that, I was a personal trainer before that. So all the things that I've ever done, it's kind of like working with the public, helping people in some way, shape or form. So same thing with the gel is helping people feel better about themselves. So um, I wanna help people um, financially and physically mentally um, because I know I'm feeling stuff now working doing all, all this personal development it is helping me as a person and I want to share that as well with people so um, but yeah I'm having the blocks financially mm -hmm. and I know I know it was starting to come but then I had this hiccup and it kind of put the brakes on that okay so. okay Let's talk about your typical Monday through Friday schedule. Uh, I'm assuming it is typical, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Walk me through a full, a full day's worth of um, a format. So for example, you wake up at 6 a.m., you get ready for work, and you, leave, you walk out the door at 7 a.m., uh, you have, I don't know, just if, if that makes any sense, you just go, go down the line of your typical day. I'm on my way to work. I arrive at work at 7.30. I leave work at 4.30 and so on. Yep. So my typical morning, I wake up a tiny bit early every single morning because um, I, I have a cat that is a, um, she's a rag doll. So she's a needy cat. So if I don't snuggle with her in the morning, she actually yells at me. Like she follows me meowing very, very loudly if I don't pick her up. So I schedule a little bit of extra time to me wake up because I need a little bit of time to kind of wake up before I start get going. Um, I do immediately while I'm doing that also check then my all my messages because the one thing is with the gel is I get a lot of messages even throughout the night. So I have to turn my notifications off. So I turn them back on, read the messages that I have with that, respond to some, some it's too early because like I'm getting up at six, between six and 6.30. Um, then I get ready. I walk out the door no later than, 
um, let's see there, so 8.30, so I'm leaving at by 7.30, 8.45, uh, no, 8.30, 7.45, 7.30 or 7.45 at the latest. I usually get to work a little bit early, so again, I can maybe plan out some posts that I'm going to do throughout the day on my break. Um, I work in the medical field, so I can't bring my phone into work, so I can only check it on my scheduled break. Um, and then I'm done at 4.30. And then usually I either have live scheduled or follow-ups all night, um, but my I also do lash extensions still. So some, some nights it's either I have live schedules or trainings with somebody in my downline or upline, um, or I have lash clients coming. So usually every single night of the week, something is going on. Um, but, and then the weekends are focused on gel as much as I possibly can, because that's really the only time that I can, besides the night, but I feel like I don't have enough time after work to really focus on it as much as I can on weekends. Sure. So what time do you typically go to bed and try to um, go to sleep? Try to right around 11, 11.30 at the latest since I have to get up so early. Okay. If, what time do you typically wake up? About six. About six, okay. That makes sense. You talked about what you wanted earlier and you were able to define that pretty well. Can you help me understand a little bit more about the why part of it and why, why what you want is so important to you? My whole life I have struggled with debt, my entire life. Um, except for I moved to Minnesota for a little, uh, about six years. <clears throat> Um, the economy is so much different everywhere else except for New England. New England is just, just a lot more expensive. Um, taxes, everything else is so much higher here in New England. Um, but so when I lived out in Minnesota, it was actually pretty good. I had money in the bank. I had, a, it wasn't my house, but um, I had a house and um, like I, I was, I was able to travel a little bit more and um, then I moved back to New England and it was like back to where I've always been. Um, so my why is like my grandfather's now 92 and um, I want to be able to go out to Minnesota to see him whenever I want and not have to worry about somebody telling me no you can't have that time off even though you have vacation pay or Whatever. I don't want to be tied down. I want to be able to do stuff. Um, like my husband got injured at work. He's on um, workman's comp from a surgery. Um, so obviously they don't pay him what he was getting when he was working because it's not as much. And so like, I just want to be able to, if something like that in the future ever comes up, I want to not have to worry anymore and not have anything tie us down and not have to say, no, we can't afford it anymore. Like we can't go on this trip because we can't afford it or we can't get the time off or any of those things. I just want to be able to do what we want when we want it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. If we peel back another layer and try to get a deeper understanding as to what type of emotion is attached to that, what emotion would you attach to uh, your why? Um, I don't know what, exactly what you mean by what emotion is attached to it. Like, I, I feel like I struggle. Um, so if I were to be able to have that financial freedom, um, I, I think I would be... A, like a weight would be lifted off my chest. Mm -hmm. What positive feeling would you get with having the ability to spend more time with your family? Um, joy, just because, I mean, making memories with your family while they're here is, there's nothing that can compare to that. Because as I've learned <clears throat> very recently, you don't know how much time you have. Right, right. 
Can you think of any other emotions or feelings you would get? Um, just comfort. Comfort knowing that I don't have to struggle um, anymore. Mm. The, the fact that owing, owing stuff and having the bills, it's, it's kind of like you're, you're trapped. You're, you're, you're in a box and you, you're stuck and you can't mm. get out. You know what I mean? Like you're just boggled down. I've got chains on me. Uh, so what's holding you back? Um, well, I think the block is, um, and this is the emotional part, is my mother in, on August 23rd of this year, um, committed suicide. Sorry. And. Katie, I'm so sorry. Not only, um, we don't, we think that her whole reason why she committed suicide is not because of something with her. She went to the doctor and asked for a medical card actually to help with her anxiety. And um, they talked her out of it. Um, she told the doctor that um, she has been suicidal in the past, but she's like, that. the reason why we know this is because my father after went and said, what was said in this office visit? Because she's now dead. And um, the doctor said that she had told her that she was suicidal in the past. She, her exact words were, I'm not there now, but I'm here so that I can make sure that I don't get to that point again. And the doctor talked her out of the medical card and put her on Zoloft, which the number one side effect of Zoloft is suicide. And eight days later, so, um, so because of the situation and because of that, and the job that I do have, um, I work in a very, I work in a call center, but it's a medical. So I do medical and billing for um, a very big um, corporate company. And I work in their corporate headquarters doing it. So it's a very high stress. I have people screaming at me all day. I couldn't go back to having people scream at me when that just happened to my mom. So they could send it out so that I could get a um, leave of absence for six weeks. Well, I got denied for two DIs. So that six weeks that I was out, then no pay. So it just kind of like, it was like a snowball effect. Like certain things just kept like, well, now you're not going to get paid for that. And now you're not going to get paid for that. So the bills just kept coming on top of losing my mother so it's added to the stress and then I'm I do everything I can to stay as positive as possible however with and I know that they always say you are what you think about so if you're always stressing about bills then it's just going to keep coming so it's really hard to stop thinking about it when it's all that I'm seeing and that is all I'm getting right now, but. Katie, when did this happen? Um, August 23rd. Okay, so it's very recent still. My, I ask you questions so I can attempt, I'm no, not always successful at it for various reasons, but I attempt to find the one major thing that is holding you back, people back from what their goals are. And I've got a method, it's called the JAM method. J stands for journey, A stands for attitude, M stands for method. And there's subcategories underneath those. So I'm also trying to identify the subcategory that's holding you back. So I'm gonna continue to ask questions until we, I feel like we found it. What part of the procedure, do you feel that you, you, you have a, a wall up? Does that um, question make sense? Yes, and 
but I, I don't know if I could pinpoint it. I, I do know that like when it comes to money, I do think that it kind of stems from my whole life. My parents always also struggled and their common phrase, which I'm sure everyone has heard it at some point in their life, money doesn't grow on trees. So even though I keep saying like my biggest thing that I say, because Danielle said it and it's a good one and I would love to have it happen is I am a money magnet. Money flows to me and through me. The more I get, the more I give, but it's not coming. And I think it's just because maybe I have that little thing in my head. It doesn't come, it doesn't grow on trees. Like, that may be true. Uh, I've got some more questions. So you are using, you're in network marketing. Uh, and it, if I ever say anything throughout uh, this conversation that is not correct, just interrupt me uh, because I also make assumptions. Yes. So uh, that's okay to do so. Uh, okay. So you have, I know I'm at network marketing. Uh, I'm familiar with your business. I'm also a part of it as well. There's a, there's an eight, Four to one method. I say that right. Yeah. <laughs> you probably know it better than I. Yeah. So I'm certainly not going to coach you on this method, but I <laughs> want to make sure that you know you know it. I do. Okay. We have eight, four responds. Um, two will look and one will sign. Beautiful. So are you? So the eight means we're looking to have discussions with eight people a day. Mm -hmm. Is the goal. Is that something that you've achieved in January? Um, not every single day, but pretty close. I, I'm, I have no problem. Um, I'm a very, very outgoing, bubbly um, type of person. So I have no problem at all ever reaching out to somebody, um, talking about anything. Um, I, that's one thing that I do take after my mother. I can meet. <laughs> I go. Um, I don't know if you noticed from the other day when I met you, I just totally right out of the crowd <laughs> just in front of your face. And that's just my personality. I have no problem just going up to anybody, anywhere and introducing myself. <laughs> that's great. No, you certainly don't. <laughs> Which I appreciate it. I thought it was just me. So <laughs> that's cute. So you're using the method. Where do you find that you're not successful with it? Because it sounds like it's, it's, it's working, no? Yeah, but my whole thing is, so I'm, I'm, I have, I think I'm pretty good with me getting personally enrolled. But my whole thing is, even with the last company that I was with, I'm having a hard time finding people that would like to do the business. Or what I, I feel is like, I'm highly motivated very and especially money motivated like this isn't the only stream of income or the second income right now i have pretty much four total income right now but i'm always looking for something else um i call myself a hustler like i work my butt off and i just would love to find others that would love to work with me and that's my big struggle is finding others that are motivated like I am, coachable like I am. Like when my whole thing is when I get into a new company, one, I want to learn everything I can, but also I want to find the people that are successful and do exactly what they say. If they say watch a video, I'm watching that video. If they say read a book, I'm reading that book. If they say reach out to this many people, I'm reaching out to this many people. And I have so many people that they're like, yeah, I want to do the business. And then I'm like, okay, here, why don't you, this is what I did. Here's this X, Y, Z. And then I'll do even one of the things. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not going to do it for you. Do you tend to be the typical type A type of person where you have uh, all, all your uh, ducks in a row? And if you were able to, I'm not asking you to, but if you, if you spun your video camera around, everything would have be in its place. No. Oh, Definitely no, it's, not me. it's the Definitely exact opposite. Not. 
I am so not organized, it's not even funny. But when it comes to having a goal, I do have blinders on and I will go for the goal. Yeah. But I have a, I'm struggling with finding people that are the same way, same mindset, I guess mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. How long have you been with your uh, been a uh, distributor of with the gel and uh, and you all? June. Since June. Mm -hmm. How many distributors have have been working with you since that you've gotten involved? I have personally enrolled twenty two. Okay. Um, and I have about I want to say I think seven or eight customers as well. Seven or eight. Seven or eight what? Customers. Okay. So, um, yeah. So in the in let's use last week as an example. Monday through Monday through Sunday, you approach at least eight people every day. Um. Or I close think to last it. Last week was a little bit slower than most, just because I was super sick last week. Mm -hmm. But and then getting ready for the big events on Saturday, I had to move some of my last clients. So I wasn't able to connect with as many, but I still had a couple people sign up this last week, so. Great. How about the week before? No matter what, even if I don't um, reach out to somebody new, I'm always following up with somebody old as well. Even if they said no or not at this time, I still check in periodically um, I would say, and I even let them know, like, all right, so not right now, but how about I'll check in with you in like, say, a month or so. And then this is the great thing about Facebook Messenger is like, you can go and see exactly who, when, where. And I don't ever delete any of the messages, so I can always see, all right, so it's been this long since I talked to them last, so I said I was going to follow up then. So that's another thing that I do is just follow up with old ones, too. So you mentioned that tragedy. How do you feel that tragedy is holding you back? Um, I think the reason why is because it's, it's consuming me as to like the what if and all that, because it wasn't like just a typical death. It wasn't her just getting sick and passing. This is something that like, we pretty much think that it was the meds she was trying. She did say that she didn't like how she was feeling on it and all this other stuff. And But there's still the back of your mind, like, would she really be here if she wasn't on there? Or was she really planning on doing this? And just, so it consumes me in that, where, like, it kind of eats away at me. No matter how much I try to get rid of the negative, replace it with the positive, it's kind of hard with that situation. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're focusing too much on the negative? So it's impacting the amount of people that you approach? It could, yeah. It's six o'clock, my time. And you're EST, so we're in the same time. How many people have you approached today? Um, no new, just because while I'm at work, I really have no time at all. So it generally it generally happens. It begins at six o'clock ish. Okay, okay. And you intend to reach out to eight people or so. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form today. So how are you going to do that? What's the game plan? Um, so I usually go on to different groups. I find new groups too and try to interact on those and then um, make just to um, establish kind of some sort of a bond with a couple people in there, friend them, and um, then in a couple weeks, like chat with them, but not anything business wise, but at least then, especially if you talk to them through Facebook Messenger, it does help with the algorithm so that they see more of your posts. So um, I try to do more of stuff like that um, as well as just completely reaching out just for the gel. Um, sure. 
just 100%. Hey, have you heard about this? I do it a little bit more of a ask how you're doing, what you like to do type of getting to know you, and then you automatically just see my stuff. So, and then it brings them more to ask the question. So. Right. What are you, what are your expectations? Because it sounds like you're not meeting certain expectations too. As far as let's let's use benchmarks too. So in January, what do you feel that you should have been able to achieve? We only have a few months or a few days left in January. What do you feel like you should have been able to achieve, and what do you? What are, are, do you feel you're going to achieve? Yeah, so I wrote down a few weeks ago, um, my, I had only two goals, serious goals set. And I know that if you write it in red ink, it's a little bit more likely to happen too. Um, but my one that I'm kind of bummed that I didn't hit it was that I wanted to at least make um, coordinator because I still haven't even hit that just yet. Because my, my self-built, like I said, I'm not finding anyone that's really all that motivated. I, I've got so many that keep saying, yeah, I wanna do it, and then they do nothing. Mm -hmm. So that self-built leg is just really, really struggling. And I'm trying to do it as much as I can, but there's only so much I can do all by myself. Um, but. Yeah, my goal was to hit coordinator before the event. So coordinator is another level in the company where it's it's uh, another uh, achievement level, correct? Yeah. yeah, and then my next goal was March 1st, I want to hit coach. Okay, so what do you need to, what other benchmarks do you need to achieve in order to reach that status? Do you have to get more distributors in, you know, over over the time period, uh, more people using the product? More people using the product, but more people also putting in some sort of work. I mean, mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be as much as I do, <laughs> because, um, but a little bit of work as well. Like, I would like to have some teamwork on my, on my personally developed team. You know what I mean? How often do you get the team together and speak to them together and in private? Um, I, well, my team is all over the country. I have a couple people from Minnesota, a couple down in South Carolina, North Carolina. I think I have like three or four people that are actually local. Sure. I, it doesn't have to be locally, though. Okay. So does that mean there's no zoom meetings or any other type of collaborative meetings i haven't tried that yet but okay um actually i did try one time to attempt it with my ambassador Kristen that you met the other night as well okay. um we tried to do a zoom with my people and only one of them actually attended the zoom out of all of them like a couple of them said that they were going to and then last minute didn't even log on or anything. So um, I attempted it one time, um, but that's a good idea. I haven't even thought about attempting it again. Maybe that would be a good idea. If we do it as a team, maybe them talking with each other might get them a little bit more motivated. And how often do you speak with them individually? Um, I try at least every few days to check in, see how everybody's doing, and um, anytime there's any kind of um, big call, like tonight is the, the uh, big one, so I just take a picture of it, and I privately message every single one individually, mm -hmm. or in our smaller team group. I'll also, on top of personally sending them the message, I tag them in it too, just to let them know. Um, whether or not they check the messenger or their text messages. If they're on Facebook, they might see it quicker that way. So, um, and you have somebody at a high level that can be your mentor, correct? Oh, yeah. Yep. And they, are, they make themselves available when you, as you need? 
as yeah. Great. I'm so sorry. I I have I have some more questions. Let's let's talk about the benchmarks more specifically. So what would you need to have achieved if you can answer this question? How many how many distributors and people using the products, customers, would you have needed to achieve in January in order to reach your goal? So I don't know exactly how many like more reps, but dollar wise, I would have needed to double what my one leg is at pretty much to achieve that. How long did it take you to build that one leg? Since June. Since June. But I mean, since June, I've done both, both legs. Like you have to have so many on each leg and I wanted to have like, Hello. So I did put a few more on my the other leg that kind of builds itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have I want to say five or six, but all the rest of them are on my self-built leg. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that is a realistic goal? Yeah. So we can we can well how how far how far off were you were you? Um. So okay. I would need for coordinator in my lesser volume leg five thousand. Okay. So it's likely it's likely you'll achieve the goal in February. Yeah. I better. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> and what prevented you from achieving it in January? Um, I, I think it's just struggling with the finding motivated people or motivating them. I don't know how I'm supposed to motivate them. Um, everyone said, I, I've asked the question before, how do you get your motivate a team motivated? And they say that mainly it's you show by example, but I work my butt off. I'm always attending every single call that I can, um, watching everything that I can, reaching out as much as I can. Um, but it's not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm hearing is, Katie, I I think it's obvious that you had an event in your life that could very well have been traumatic to you. And I'd be shocked if it wasn't really, but I don't think that's the issue here. It would be, you're responding, you're responding to that from, at least from what you're telling me, from my perspective, as you should. I, I think if, if that were me, then I would, I don't know how I would, be able to handle it that that would be very traumatic for me but i don't see i don't see that issue holding you back from from achievement what i'm hearing here is that is the m in method unless unless i'm missing something i think it's the m in jam which is which is method i think you have i don't think leadership is a strength of yours which it, and 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 it would be irresponsible for me to um, to tell you how to do that. But and this is the very first thing in the method part of Jam is to find somebody who is successful at doing what you want to do and do exactly what they did. Now it sounds like you're not getting the answers that you're looking for, which is fine. I know in, in the company that you're involved with, it has several people that you can reach out to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need to hear the same thing a few times from different people for it to sink in and then, and then start it up. 
uh, and, and then you know just create application. One thing I know from experience is you may not find people, anyone that works as hard as you do. You could be the next uh, diamond is the highest level uh, achievement in the company. It's it's likely that you're going to achieve that level. Typically, those are the extraordinary type of people where they're they're hard to they're hard to mirror. Mm. So it doesn't mean that others can't achieve it. It's it's a, a system that people follow, and if they follow it, but you also have different levels of of commitment from the people that you work with yeah. in, in any type of in, in a corporate setting and a direct sales and, and network marketing setting. So I don't feel like, I don't feel like this is going to be one of those aha moment types of jam sessions, which is completely fine. Sometimes you need to hear, hear it from, hear it from somebody where you just got to find somebody to mirror. And if the shit ain't working, then just ask somebody else. You know, this is one of those where you got to keep failing until you find the answers. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I would, I would, the only advice that I can give you is, is that just keep blowing up somebody's phone <laughs> and, and, and blowing up uh, like a, just a ton of people who have been successful and, you know, maybe that's your mission tonight. You know, just to flood your brain with with uh, information from others in regards to leadership. Yeah. But I think leadership is is just a portion of it too. You know, sometimes patience is <laughs> is helpful. You know. Yeah, and I know that's one thing that I kind of struggle with because I'm a um, I am the type of person that I barely ask, I don't ask for help very often because um, I can just, I can do it. Mm -hmm. um, I used to work in the restaurant industry bartending and if I was really, really busy, my, I would I still wouldn't ask for help because it would take more time for me to explain what I needed help with. And for me to just do it all on my own, plus I wouldn't want to go back and have to fix it. Mm -hmm. So I do, I do like to, I don't know, take control. Mm -hmm. but maybe the other thing is maybe I need to ask for help maybe more. Maybe that way, maybe then I can get some of these people to work a little bit. Maybe it's, I'm a little too pushy when it comes mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. that's that's really that's really interesting that you that you put it that way because i'm wondering if if that's what's holding you back from your leadership because you can't do you know that strength is in the numbers yeah and you know it's impossible to be successful in a network marketing company direct sales company corporate company to do everything yourself yeah. so is there is there an element in your psychology that you on one hand want to do everything yourself but on um, on the other hand i'm sure you realize that it's it's impossible well, yeah you, it's yeah. right yeah and i wouldn't be surprised if that is one of the big reasons is because like i said that something that I struggled with with my last business. It was me doing all the work. And then I think it's, this one isn't so much the same way because you really have to, like, they have to do some work to make some money. Whereas sure. my last business, at least, um, I would just, we called it stacking. Even though with this type of, um, with the gel, the way you do it is you do stack anyone under you. Whereas the other business, you wouldn't really do it all that much, but my people kind of got used to me just enrolling so many people and just putting them under them. So they didn't really even need to do the work. So. Um, yeah, everything, everything to me goes right to method. It really does. I feel like 
obviously leadership, just like I was saying earlier, uh, focus on leadership, uh, read everything that you can, uh, leadership, your, your mind's right. Your mind's right. Like, I, I feel like, yeah, you, you've got some stuff to, to work out, some recent events, but that's, that's going to be there. It's not, it's not holding you back though. Yeah. It's there. It's present. I'd be shocked if it wasn't, but that's not, you're still able to perform. I think the, the, what, what you need that's going to grow your business has everything to do with success being in the numbers and keep going through the numbers and leading the team. Yeah. And that all that, all that points to is, is two, two things. One, keep finding your mentors and find as many of them as you can. And two, find a leader, find, start reading leadership books uh, in, in for network marketing. And I believe there is, there's been a, there's been a list. So, uh, and that's, that's actually why I asked about how, how often you get your, uh, your, uh, your group together and the individual conversations too, because I was curious how much time you were working on making sure they were motivated for their reasons. Yeah. You know, and, and hearing really leadership, you need to be a, 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 a your version, Katie's version of Danielle, Katie's version of Les Brown, um, Tony Robbins. I, I watched Tony Robbins like I saw uh, there's, when I put myself in state and I'm talking uh, to a crowd about my jam session. I picture myself like Tony Robbins because I'm so connected to him. And yeah. that's how that's the approach that I personally use for for leadership. And I think those are the type of strategies, the motivators, the diamonds, they're in, in most cases are the ones inspiring everybody else. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, how often do you, do you, do you record videos for your, for your, for your group? Not really. So that's a good, maybe I should start doing that. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's going to make you a more powerful, powerful leader, uh, a much stronger and hungrier group, because you personally, you know your what and why. You fired that off. I basically didn't even ask you, and you fired it right off uh, in the very beginning. And most people can't do that. Yeah. So finding those things and reminding people of those things and and asking them to put it in front of them and really understand their why, you're going to get a better, more, you're going to get more, a heck of a lot more motivation out of them. Yeah. I mean, I look at it every day. I have in my cubicle, I have a cube and yeah. I print off my, my affirmations, like mm -hmm. my goals, like I'm, I'm happy for this. I'm happy, healthy, um, financially free, like all that sort of stuff is if I look at my computer screen, cause I have two of them. So if I look at them, it's directly in between the two screens. So I can't get away from it. I have mm -hmm. to look at it every single day, all day long. So, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. What's so cool about Danielle and, and the people in your group is, uh, did, did you say that you tag them in her videos? Yeah. You do. Good, good. And you're not sure if they're, they're really watching them though. Oh, there's been so many times where I've asked if they have, and they're like, no, I haven't yet. And I'll follow up. Have you watched it yet? No, no. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. That makes sense. But every single video, like I watch as much as I possibly can. Cause I know they say it tap into as much as you possibly can. Yeah. As much as I physically can, I am there because mm. I want, that mm. I know I can feel it in my soul I know I'm going to achieve this mm -hmm. this is like I've I've been with other companies and like and I could like yeah it'd be awesome to get there I know I am going to crush this it's just I, <laughs> I'm hungry for it but it's not there I <laughs> it's not even it feels like it started moving along really good and then all of a sudden I had the hiccup and mm. now it feels like 
like you're on a bike, you know, and you're trying your hardest to get the pedals to turn and it's just not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel right now. I'm just stuck. Like I can't get over the hump. Mm -hmm. And I know once I get over the hump, then it's just going to be like a rocket. Yeah, 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 I believe so too. And I, I wholeheartedly believe that you're going to get there. It's, uh, I feel like the biggest takeaway from the event the other day, even for me, is that success is in the numbers. Yeah. You know, I think that's going to be important, uh, an important balance for you and to focus on leadership. You know, you're going to have to become a kick freaking butt leader. Yeah. You know, because you are going to have to lead the people that are under you when you're a diamond. Yeah. So maybe the universe is kind of holding you back until you, you, you push forward to allow yourself to grow so you can be the leader that you are required to be. Yeah. I, I'll, give you, I'll give you a really good example. This jam method I've had for, for going on, now going on 17 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you know the first time I launched it was only a few months ago? Really? I had this method. It was called something different, same stuff. I've had it for a very long time. And it was suppressed, obviously, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out why. For so many years. And there were used there was never a week, usually never a day that went by that said, I, I know I can build something incredible and touch many people's lives and likely become a millionaire doing so. But it was suppressed. And I couldn't imagine why I looked at it. It was on my desk for years and on my bookshelf and just looked at it, walked by it every day. And uh, it, it stayed on the shelf. And when I reflect back, I look at the difference of where I am today and where I was before. And the only difference is the type of leader that I am today. And I would, I would caution you to become a leader as fast as possible because the universe likes speed. And it's going to be damn uncomfortable because for so many years, you've been, you haven't been a leader. You've yeah. been a damn good doer. You've accomplished yeah. some serious stuff because you're a damn good doer, which is important and required, but to get it to the next level, now leadership needs to be, needs to be there. Okay. So perhaps it's the universe saying, look, this is right here in front of you, but you have to become a leader in order to be successful at it anyway, because yeah. once you're there, how are you going to lead the people under you? Yeah. Each one of those diamond amb ambassadors are seriously good leaders. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And I bet you they weren't born leaders. You know, if you ever had a heart to heart with Stephanie, maybe she'll tell you, like, hey, look, that was probably the biggest thing that I had to freaking overcome. And, and it was hard as hell, but I was able to do it. Yeah. I sadly, I didn't have a mentor or a coach to tell me that. I looked, I looked back and, and, and was very curious about the difference. And the only difference that I can find was that I was a horrible, horrible leader. And I didn't, I was bad. I'm not proud to say that, but I was, I took a negative approach on the people that worked for me. And it was basically, you have to do X, Y, Z or, or screw you, buddy. You know, you're going to get an, you're going to get the angry version of Bill. Yeah. And I was able to find a mentor a few years ago, about three years ago, and uh, he was an awesome, awesome man. And I said, look, I'm going through employees like crazy. I said, I have all the systems. I have money. I'm like, I don't know why I can't grow my business. So we spent a week together, and he goes, you know why you can't run, own your, why you're not growing your business? And he goes, you're not an effective leader. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm the head of the company, and it's like, it doesn't make you a freaking leader. It's like, you gotta, you gotta learn how to lead. So, and there is a lot of information out, out there on leadership. And I feel like we talked the other day about that one degree shift. I think that one degree shift for you is all about, all about leadership. 
I've often seen like this one thing where when you're able to, we're all here obviously to grow mm -hmm. and the universe is some pretty, is some serious stuff. Mm -hmm. and they, I, I never believed in it, but this last, well, eight months, seven months, it's really eye-opening of how powerful it truly, truly is. Mm -hmm. So do you I think, have... Do you think the universe will allow you to become a diamond before you're a diamond? No. You can't. Yeah. But it's funny because, like, now that I'm sitting here and you keep bringing up the leader, it's funny because it was only like a week ago it did pop in my head like I'm like you know all this stuff and I just keep saying that I just need my team I just need my team but maybe it's me maybe I just need to somehow but I'm like nah I'm doing all the stuff I'm supposed to yeah yeah, yeah you fight it <laughs> that's awesome but that's that's we know the answers but we can also bury the answer you know, yeah. and, and come up with that excuse. So yeah. I'm glad you shared that with me because your own mind is telling you the answer. It's just yeah. you're you're now you're rationalizing it. Yeah. So it makes it makes a lot of sense. You know, and her um, I did meet um, Paul for the first time, um, and immediately he started asking me questions, and he immediately. I mean, all I did was introduce myself, and he's like, "Where's your team? What are you doing?" have you done this? Have you done that? And I was like, wow, I did it. I didn't even know I could do that. But I, I did it all that night, actually. Saturday, awesome. no, I did it Sunday. Sunday after. Um, as soon as I woke up, I did it out. He said XYZ. I did XYZ immediately the second I opened my eyes. So yes. like I say, I'm, I'm the type of person, you tell me what to do. I'm going to do it. If you yeah. say I have to do this to succeed, I will accomplish it, no matter how much it's out of my comfort zone. My other thing is I'm going to, because I want the car bonus so bad, um, my car that I want is the Range Rover Sport. So every single time there's anything that's out of my comfort zone, I just say repeatedly, Range Rover, Range Rover, Range Rover, yes. and so I just dip it. <laughs> I love it. You totally got the mindset right. It's just process. Is yeah. So I'm assuming he made you a little uncomfortable in that conversation. Actually, when he got on stage, I don't know if you remember what he said on stage, but it was our conversation because I had just, as soon as I turned around from talking to Paul, I saw then Kristen, and I was like, so Paul said this. And he asked me this, and he asked me this, and he said this. And so he starts talking. She hits me on the arm. She's like, he's talking about you. I was like, oh, my God. That's our whole conversation. That's funny. That's <laughs> awesome. Could he – is he an opportunity to be a mentor as well? Um, I'm t He seems like the type of person that doesn't care that we're on cross lines. Yeah. Yeah. Not really, he's from the New Jersey crew. But, I mean, the way that he automatically, right off the bat, offered, when I, I didn't even ask for it. Yeah. So, I, I wouldn't, if I reached out, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if he would mm. not be helpful. Because, I mean, like I said, I go up to introduce myself, and immediately he's picking apart what I'm doing uh -huh. and telling me all sorts of stuff to do. So Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think he would be a he would be a go to guy too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, how do you feel? I mean, uh I know, actually I feel like I think we finally found what my thing is. Awesome. Like I kept thinking, I'm like, maybe it's the whole money doesn't grow on trees. Maybe that's in the back of my head. Like maybe I'm not worthy of this greatness that I know that I I know that I am but maybe it's something in my subconscious saying no I'm not and that's what's holding me back or the whole thing with my I don't know but I I really do think that maybe it is just the leadership because like I said I I already kind of thought it but I was like no that's not it <laughs> <laughs> 
sometimes there's this thing called paralysis by analysis too, but I, I feel you just nailed it. We know the answers, but we rationalize our way out of it sometimes. And, and just in conversation, you can you could put the pieces together and come to come to this breakthrough where it's like you know what like the universe is talking to me i'm talking to me but i'm 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 zipping them up <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah. awesome good cool um, thank you because i do feel like this really accomplished something i good. do feel like now i'm going to now i know my next thing to dissect <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Perfect. Well, good, good. I, I really appreciate that. And what would you say to somebody who's on the fence with doing something like this? Um, same thing as I've been, I've been trying to push the whole mindset. Like I do personal lives where I, like I said, I want to inspire people. I want to help change people's lives in any way possible. I want to spread awareness about um, depression and suicide and and the power of like the mind because it is really a decision. You can either let it crush you or make it help. You can get stronger from it. And like, that's why I've really, I'm, I was not going to let this crush me. So I was going to do everything and pour myself into more personal development because I was going to become stronger because of the situation. And so I want to help other people and you by doing this will help them accomplish those things. So um, 100% I will recommend people to do this. <laughs> awesome. That's so cool. Well, I, I appreciate it. I'm so glad that we were able to, to find that one, that one thing and, or, or two things where we just need a, a couple degrees shift and, and that, that'll get you right on your path. And I don't doubt for a second that you're going to get, you're going to put your head in a book real darn fast and start reaching <laughs> people. And, and please let me know, let me know how things are going. I'll be su super curious to see the transition as, as you grow. I will definitely keep you posted. You might <laughs> ask you some questions here and there. Too. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Katie, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time and your and your honesty and, and your courage in doing this. Thank you so much for doing this. It helps a lot. You're welcome. All right, go get them. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. You too, thanks. Bye. <laughs>